Hey, I'm Tyler, a bike groomer. I'm here with Josh, the owner of Silka, and we just wanted to quickly run through like what makes the difference when it comes to tools and as far as tolerances of hex in particular, but also the Torx bits, and not just the tools themselves, but also the bolts. So I'm gonna turn it over to you and let you, or let you explain where things matter. So the, the trick to hex is that the pressure faces are kind of in the perimeter of the tool. So if I pull this, eight's a good one to look at. So if I look at this eight millimeter, uh, what you see is the ISO spec for this is gonna be something in the order of 7.88 to 7.98 when measured across the faces. Now that 0.1 millimeter gap is mirrored in the bolt head, which is gonna be somewhere on the order of uh, 8.02 to 8.12, give or take. And so the goal with the tool is to have the tool be as close to the top of that tolerance as possible and to have the bolt as close to the bottom of the tolerance as possible so that you get that tight fit. I think we've all had that experience of you put your tool in the bolt and you expect it to rotate a couple of degrees before it bites and it actually rotates a lot more than you think, right? And, and typically what's happened there is either you have a high tolerance bolt with a low tolerance uh, hex key or maybe you have some wear in the bolt. Uh, some bolts are harder than others, so you have different specifications. Uh, in metric, we have 8.9, 10.9, 12.9. Uh, they get harder as they go up. And so if it's a softer bolt or an aluminum bolt or titanium, uh, you can actually see growth with use of the inside of the hex. And eventually, we all experience this as a cam out of the hex key, right? So you go to tighten and the key begins to tighten and then it actually cams itself out and the bolt, uh, the fastener is essentially ruined at that point. So we use the plating process to actually grow the tools into the top 20% uh, of the spec. And it's a little bit more expensive to do it this way because it's time consuming. You know, the tools have to be measured as they go. But in, instead of using the entire 0.1 millimeter of spec, we actually use 0.02 millimeters of spec. So only the top 20%. And that puts this tool uh, as, as close to as large as it can possibly be, which means that even in bolts that are slightly oversized and their heads are at the high end of their tolerance, you get a nice tight fit. Now, long term, the real solution to this is Torx. And the thing with Torx to think about, let me slide this guy back sure. in. So the thing to th understand with Torx is that instead of the pressure faces being on the outer perimeter, the pressure faces are radial, and there's more of them. And so as the tool grow, becomes larger or smaller, the pressure faces actually stay relatively the same because they're radial instead of um, uh, out at the perimeter. And so with a Torx tool, you actually have a much larger range of tolerance for both, both the bolt head and the tool, where you still get a really nice bite. And that's where Torx, as the name implies, can typically handle much higher torque. Uh, than a hex key can handle, and they're also much less likely to be damaged, both the bolt head and the tool, when used at higher torque. All right, so for for hex ones, I've seen some brands, like, this to me just visually has kind of like a slightly rounded edge. Like, mm -hmm. is there a reason why that's that way versus like super sharp or even like maybe a, a little concave between right. the points? So the challenge with the hex key is if we make this corner too sharp, then it will actually bite in and create a little ridge in the bolt. Uh, okay. That for that tighten or loosen is a bonus. But for subsequent tightening and loosening, say you're using a different tool, that's now actually a flaw in the surface of the material okay. uh, that can now be crushed or broken or just add to the bolt damage. And so typically, um, you, if you're look, looking at say peak torque for a single tighten, it's good to have this corner sharp. If that's a bolt that you're gonna tighten and loosen over time, say a seat post binder bolt or a bolt in a stem face plate, uh, that's actually gonna to lead to a much faster failure of that fastener. And so the difficulty is finding how to break that corner. If it's too rounded, then it becomes a sliding surface for the tool to, to twist and, and naturally cam out. Um, again, it's one of the sort of fundamental flaws of the hex head in a bolt. Uh, which, if you go all the way back to the beginning of hex head bolts, they were designed to cam out to prevent over torquing, uh, to prevent the heads from breaking off of bolts, um, much more so than they were created to actually aid in 
the tightening and loosening of the bolts themselves. Okay, so let's talk about bolts for a second. Like, sure. let's say somebody's got hex bolts. Maybe ones they can tell it's about to be stripped out and they want to replace it. For aftermarket bolts, you know, they can figure out the thread pitch, I guess. But then, like, how do you know if you're getting a high quality bolt that's going to be really high tolerance versus cheap something off of like Northern Tool or something? Right. <laughs> so. Metric bolts, metric fasteners are uh, standardized by ISO and they have numbers typically associated with them. So 8.9, 10.9, 12.9 are numbers often uh, seen in like the part numbers or in the description. If you're buying them, you know, uh, online, you can usually find that. You know, most bike shops that you're going to walk into, they already know all this stuff. They can help guide you down that path. Okay. Um, but you can go in and look for the higher the number is a typically a harder um, stronger, higher tensile strength material. So, uh, you know, 12.9 is the best of the metric, metric fasteners, and typically uh, it's going to be the hardest material. Now, what it doesn't guarantee you is the tightness of the fit in the hex, because that uh, tolerance window like the, for the size, that's the same for all the fasteners. Um, so, you know, when, when we look at it, we actually have special tooling that we can use to gauge those. And oftentimes what we see is if you buy a box of 100 12.9 fasteners, you can gauge between them and you'll see a, a pretty good variance across the range. Um, not having that tooling at home, it's a little bit harder. And so that's where buying the, har the, the higher hardness material is generally your best option. And good tools. And right. good tools, right. absolutely. So since we're talking to you about tools, this is the long T-handle set that comes with most sizes of hex and torques that you would want. What does this retail for? These retail for 185. They come in this little uh, carry folio. It very nice. It has a nice handle. It folds over. It will hang on the arm of your work stand. Uh, also has the added benefit of turning the top tube of any bicycle into a local workstation. Very nice. And then has some specialty, uh, so we've got H2 through 10, including Torx T25 and T30, uh, with some fun bicycle-specific uh, tool, uh, tool features, such as this distance is exactly your eight millimeter pedal spindle. Um, Very cool. And so you get the maximum possible torque with this long lever, you've got a great hand control point and the minimal overhang. So instead of your leverage wanting to cam the tool out of the fastener, all of your force is going in, is make, essentially making torque to either remove or tighten that lever. Cool. It's like you thought of everything. We tried. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Josh. Thanks, sir.